Good morning to you, St. Luke's. This is Greg, and I'm looking today at Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 30. So let's get started. Father, we thank you so much for today, and we thank you that you are the Lord of heaven and earth. We thank you that your ways are not our ways, and your kingdom is not our kingdom and your views are not our views and we thank you that that even when we think we know best you know better and so lord we ask you to 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 instill in us a real sense of you being right in jesus name amen say the collect for today O God, our Saviour, you reveal your salvation through Jesus Christ, our wisdom and strength. Teach us to shoulder our burdens and give us the strength to carry each other as you have carried us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 11, and it's supposed to be verse 16 to 24, 16 to, 16 to 19, and then 24 to, to, to 30. But I thought that uh, today we'd just do the whole thing. Now to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children sitting in the market. In the marketplace, one group shouts to the other, We played wedding music for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, but you wouldn't cry. When John came, he fasted and drank no wine, and everyone said, He has a demon in him. When the Son of Man came, he ate and drank, and everyone said, Look at this man. He is a glutton and a, fr and a drinker, a friend of tax collectors and other outcasts. God's wisdom, however, is shown to be true by its results. The people in the towns where Jesus had performed most of his miracles did not turn from their sins, so he reproached those towns. How terrible it will be for you, Chorazin! How terrible for you, too, Bethsaida, if the miracles which were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, the people there would have long ago have put on sackcloth and sprinkled the ashes on themselves to show that they had turned from their sins. I assure you that on the, on the judgment day, God will show more mercy to the people of Tyre and Sidon than to you. And as for you, Capernaum, did you want to lift yourself up to heaven? You will be thrown down to hell. If the miracles which were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would still be in existence today. You can be sure that on the judgment day, God will show more mercy to Sodom than to you. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and the learned. Yes, Father, this was how you wanted it to happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on, on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. 
So just a few thoughts from that. Uh, I just want to just uh, just look at that, and, and and I just was thinking about our kingdom, what we perceive to be the kingdom or the way or the success or, or the the way of, of, of living and Jesus, his ideas. See, Jesus was proclaiming the kingdom of God. But the people from Chorazin and Bethsaida had a view of the kingdom which was so different and ultimately so wrong. Their vision of the kingdom was all about revolution. Their vision of the kingdom was all about swords and spears, surprise attacks, some hurt, some killed, but winning in the end. Violence to defeat violence. A holy war against the unholy warriors. Love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. If he slaps you on the cheek or makes you walk a mile with him, stab him with his own dagger. That's the sort of kingdom vision that they had. And Jesus could see with the clarity both of the prophet and of the sheer common sense that he had where it would lead. Better be in Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone raining down from heaven than fighting God's battle with the, demon, with the devil's weapons. And this was his way. J John the Baptist came eating nothing but locusts and wild honey, and you, you called him demon-possessed. Now I come eating and drinking, and you call me a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and prostitutes. Jesus could clearly see that their view of success, of the right way, was through being the best, through me, me, me. You see, religion normally begins by making a distinction between the pure and the impure, and telling us to sacrifice the impure so that we can become pure. Jesus undoes religion by doing the most amazing thing. He finds God among the impure instead of among the poor, instead of among the pure. And Jesus, Jesus chose the way of the cross. He chose the way which did not lead to fame and to fortune, but he chose nails. On the cross, God is revealed as the vulnerability itself. And the Latin word vulnera means woundedness. There was a French nun called Teresa of Lisieux, who lived from 1873 to 1897. And she found a path, the path towards Christ. And she called it her little way. And I quote from her. I looked at the flowers in God's garden and I saw great big lilies and beautiful roses and I knew I could never be one of those. But I looked over in the corner and there was a little violet that nobody would ever notice. That's me. That's what God wants me to be. You see, Teresa knew that, that all we can give to God is simply who we really are. Or even better, to do very little, to do very little things with great love. Now, 
That's all God wants from any of us. All he wants is to be us to be ourselves and to do those little things, but do them with great love. It's not the perfection of the gift that matters to God. It's the desire to give the gift that pleases God. Let me say that one more time. It's not the perfection of the gift that matters to God. It is the desire to give the gift that pleases God. So let us recognize that the human view or the way of the kingdom is very often success, money, power, fame, and ego. Whilst Jesus' view of the kingdom is the way down, brokenness, woundedness, giving to God who we are to do the little things with great love. Lord, we pray that that we would begin to to realize that you have called us not into stardom and not into anything else, but into acknowledging who we are and giving that with great love back to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Have a great day, guys.